Hey, buddy. Nice game out there. No. Okay, fine. I just need you to answer a question for me real quick. All right, what? If you had the option to have played that game or not, which would you choose? You mean replay the game we just had? Yeah. No, I would not like to do that again. Great. Thanks. Why do you ask, anyway? Well, in the interest of health and saving everyone a little bit of time, we have written a petition in to allow teams to forfeit to us beforehand so no game actually needs to be played. We just get the win, and on we go. I don't think that's a rule change, and also, that is so dumb. It's not dumb. You just said you'd rather forfeit. Rather than replay that same game. You know what? It's not even worth it. No team is actually going to forfeit any games to you. That's where you're wrong, buckaroo. I've already got a team that said they'll forfeit every game I have left on my schedule with them. What pathetic, sad sack, mouth-breathing, parentless piece of trash would actually agree to forfeit their games? Low quality fans of a high quality Bruins team, that is a dub! And I got to wear a jersey for it. Marshand actually let me choose him. You'll see he's missing on the wall. So that feels good too. Best start in franchise history. Mm, we like that. We like that. Do you like that? We like that. There is nothing negative to say about this team right now. You can get nitty-gritty with some of the bottom six guys, one of them who played on the top line for a chunk of tonight, whatever. But right now, we need the depth because we got three massive players out, and we just keep winning. And not only do we keep winning, it's not like we are getting outplayed and just so happen to fall ass backwards into dubs. No, we are being the better team. We're performing like the better team, and we're winning. Like the better team usually does! 8-1? The 81-1 dream is still alive. Somebody intellectually told me, hey, whatever happened to 97-1, you chuckle fuck? Great point. But here's this. Step 1, 81-1. Step 2, 16-0. Two different things. Two different things. I'm not going to break down step one any more than that. We're only 13% or whatever the math is through step one. But we are working on it. This is going to be the lamest breakdown of the season, and you'll see why. It's going to be short, guys. This was, It felt like we were coasting our way to a victory, too. Just ridiculous. The Columbus Blue Jackets have not been good to start, and particularly in that. Merzlikens is going to start for them with a 406 goals allowed average and an 863 save percentage. I don't think either of those improved. Bottom 11 in goals four, bottom five in goals allowed. The Blue Jackets are bad. And it's weird because everyone, I think I did this too, honestly. I thought the Blue Jackets were going to be better than this, and they still might be. But they were one of the youngest teams in the league last year, still one of the youngest this year. Added some massive talent. And seem to be floundering? I get it. And maybe all of us scheduling that everyone would take a step forward because they're young in the same time. Maybe us scheduling that was wrong. But that team does not have it, man. Does not have it. Olmark to start. He was, as some may call it, flawless. Flawless. As almost usual at this point. Martian is out as they try not to overdo it. I do not even know if he traveled with the team. The balls on Jim Montgomery to see... So you still have McAvoy out, right? You're going to drop Zaboro and bring Strawman in, keep Strawman fresh. Zaboro needed a little step back as it is. Stadika just got traded. That can shake up the room. Krejci is out. Day-to-day, -day, as they say, but there's still further testing going on. So you are sitting there looking at this back-to-back... -back with travel, man, I could really use Martian tonight, and an 8 and one start would just be massive for us. But he was like, nah, man, I'm thinking long-term, and we don't even need him. And he's right, we didn't even need him. Our power play could use him, but still. Lauko recalled. Uh, he is in with Felino and Nosek. He did okay. I thought the bottom six was pretty good. 
Smith on the top line, he only got about 11 minutes of ice time, so he was getting swapped around a little bit. Zaka to center Hall and Pasternak. Zaka ain't that guy, but he's a good, steadfast center to put there in the meantime. He's much better off a third liner in my eyes. Greer is going to go on Coyle's right, and he was very, very good, I thought. Like I mentioned, Strawman gets another game. Zaboral's going to take a seat. Carlo to go with Lindholm. And then Grizz on the third pair. I do not have all the number breakdowns of how long that stayed that way. I imagine the whole game because it went so well. The team's swagger is off the charts. Swag per 60 is just, just there. The length, the girth of the swagger, untouchable. It's untouchable. Puck drops! 5.30 in. Clifton shows everyone he's going to have one of his bad Cliffy hockey games. But... I want to be very clear. It wasn't like in years past where Cliffy has the bad start and just snowballs. I thought he was really solid in the back half of this game. He just had his really rough moments, which you live with when it comes to Cliffy. 5.30 in, he straight up gives it away. He thinks he's going to grab it, misses it. Gaudreau is right there to be alone with Olmark in the slot. Gets to walk in, 1v1, hits the post. Game-changing moment, five and a half minutes in. Because you gotta imagine that that Blue Jackets team has a little more if that goes in. Ten seconds later, Clifton gets called for boarding. So we're going to the penalty kill. Great kill, mostly because of Olmark. Line and Gaudreau are gef- getting after it. And he's just stopping everything. Again, first couple minutes of the game, that is the kind of stuff that sets the tone for the rest of the game. You're going to have to earn this one. You don't get to jump out to an early lead. Difference makers. And a minute later, a battle behind Merzlikens. It's Pasternak on the boards, punches the puck up. I don't know if it touches Hall. It kind of skates through bodies in front. And Grizz is on the left point, just steps into it, picks it up, and Sniper Ernie and Cheeks! Glove side, far side for him. Beautiful shot. I don't know when everyone became so accurate. In years past, did everyone just get told, like, center mass, guys, center mass. Like, just try to keep it in towards the body so that you're not missing the net. Because we're hitting corners and posts and, and just open areas so well right now. You'd love to see it. We're going to go up 1-0 off of Grizz, who's playing on the third line tonight. A third pair, I should say, tonight. Beautiful shot. Beautiful start. 1-0. That's a game-winning goal, by the way. That's his game-winning goal. The first goal of the game. 6.36 left. Smith taken down. Go to the power play. The power play is donkey balls. But that's okay because we just didn't need it tonight. Second period. That's right. The first period was chance, goal for Columbus, goal for us, and a couple special teams notes. There's just not a lot to explain about the game. It was somewhat even in moments, but for the most part, we had possession. We had the better scoring chances. And you were just kind of waiting for this one to be over which is just crazy to say. Also, the crowd was completely dead, so took some of the vibes out of it. Second period, 3.30 in, no sick for hooking, penalty kill. During this penalty kill, about 50 seconds in, Coyle wins a board battle over Gaudreau, and Gaudreau's facing the wrong way. Coyle's going the right way. He takes off. Because they're playing one high on that blue line, it turns into a two-on-one because Zaka's so quick on the left side. Coyle uses Zaka as a decoy. Basically, as they get... Eh, about 10 feet out from Merzlikens. Zaka cuts in. Coyle cuts around him. Zaka basically sets a legal pick for the two defenders. And with the backhand, Coyle is able to beat Merzlikens short side. First shorthanded goal of the campaign. 2-0. And this penalty kill also includes a breakaway by DeBrusque. He's not able to finish it off. But let's just say their power play is terrible. Because their power play is terrible. 11.07 left, Coyle draws a tripping uh, call to the power play, don't do anything with it. 4.53 left of the period. How fast things change. The Blue Jackets feel like they've created mayhem in front of Olmark. Bodies are falling, the puck is there somewhere. And you sit there and go, if they score here, this all of a sudden becomes a game. It's 2-1, there's a lot of time left, it's basically the whole, there is literally the whole third and a few minutes left this one. This is a scary moment. But the puck gets punched out high to the blue line, where it's collected by the defenseman, who again has havoc in front of Olmark. Fling this in. Who knows what might happen? DeBrusque is there, pounces on it, blocks the shot, and is going the other way after the blocked puck. Picks it up and just beats Merzlikens high glove. 
seemed to be kind of an issue in this game for him. 3-0. That's five minutes left in the second, up 3-0. You're kind of already penciling in that dub. You're like, this is not, this team does not have it. And they're going to get just crushed by what feels like the nail in the coffin. 26 seconds left. This is leaky. It's a nice lob pass by Bergeron to get to Pasta in the neutral zone. Pasta takes the left side, fakes pass because it's sort of a two-on-one, and then just hammers this at Merzlikens. And it just squeaks by him, low blocker side on the short side. He needs to make that save. 4-0. That's your final score. Third period, nothing really happens for the first like 12 minutes. Feels like we're kind of coasting. They're getting a little chippy with us. Everybody's getting real upset at us these days. I don't know why. But not a lot happens. 702 left. We're on cruise control. Strawman goes for holding. Penalty kill. Kill it. End of game. I mean, it's a lame review of a game when you just sit there and go, all the lines did their job. The third line actually turns out, this is a game note, third line was kind of dominant as far as chances created versus chances allowed. I didn't, it was less of the eye test for that, but they were very, very good. All our lines were really good. There were chances. Old Mark just snuffed them out. I mean, in a game where an inch matters, it matters. Old Mark making the stops. Every little, every little moment where they could have put an easy one in or could have put in a a real scoring chance, high danger chance, that would change the game. And Olmark was just too good to be beaten tonight. Once again, I mean, you look at the way he battled against Ottinger the other day. I, this is another game note, basically. The way he battled against Ottinger the other day was just, the guy just wants to win, and he wants to be the reason for a win. Like, he's not, I don't, he's due for a bad one, so we can all be like, oh, all right, the dude's human. It happens. Because he just keeps winning. And he keeps being dominant. You love to see it. On that note, since the Ottawa game, our tandem has allowed six goals on 148 shots. That's mostly Olmark. But that is a nine, almost a 960 save percentage. I think Olmark's at a 943 now on the season. Six starts. Something like that. <laughs> I love this freaking team. Best start in franchise history. You love to hear that. Let's keep it going. People are already going to start talking about the playoffs, what we can and can't do. Let's just enjoy it for the first 25 games. Hopefully we stay hot. We stay good looking. I'm just not there yet, okay? I'm having so much fun in the meantime. This team is so good. You just love to see it. There will be slumps. It's going to happen. It's kind of one of those scenarios, though, where you go, well, we do have... Our top left winger, our top defenseman, and our 2C out right now when we just spanked a team, a bad team, but spanked a team on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. There's a lot of ways it could be more dire, sure, but, I mean, the team's surviving pretty well is all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good. All right, guys, that does it for me. Like, comment, subscribe, join the Discord. Discord's been really fun this season. People are jumping in left and right. We have a lot of people who are very involved. It's been really fun. And it's fun seeing new people come in when they just have their own personality to it all. It is just, they jump in, you see the username. Hey, welcome, welcome. And then they start getting involved in more conversations. It's just fun. It's just fun. Join it. Other than that, just keep enjoying, guys. Keep enjoying this great start to the season. I want to see how far we can take this best start ever for our franchise. I hope we can keep it going. We have a gauntlet coming up with a lot of travel. So let's just see how it goes. But I bet you feel pretty good. So do I go, Bee!